Okay, I'm not a lawyer or anything, but I do consider myself a bit of a true crime nut. I've watched all the episodes of Jim Can't Swim, so I think I know what I'm talking about. And I think their punishment for this crime in particular, you know, you know, you know, public execution, it, it's a bit extreme. It's well known that in Japan, the youth are expected not to be a bunch of little shit and often face higher standards than other countries. In the United States, which is where I'm going to do my research around this scenario, because it's more accessible to me for one, and also chapter two revolves around a U.S. city, so I think it's kind of fair game to just view that as a standard. So just just go with it, and also to be as lenient as possible, since California is pretty loosey-goosey with these things. Let's just go by Sega's real-life San Francisco event and look at California Penal Code 594 specifically, where, where vandalism is considered to be a misdemeanor meaner if the amount of damage caused is less than $400, but a felony if it's more than that. If the amount of defacement, damage, or destruction is $400 or more, vandalism is punishable by imprisonment or be put in a county jail not exceeding one year or by a fine not more than $10,000. If less than $400, vandalism is punishable by imprisonment in a county jail not exceeding one year or by a fine not more than $1,000. Now in this game, it's tough to say how much damage this graffiti actually causes. The amount of graffiti sprayed per wall varies. Some only require a little spray, while some of the required graffiti spans giant murals. Now let's do the math for cleaning this up. A can of paint itself costs about $10 according to walmart.com. There's probably better paint out there, so if you're a paint enthusiast, chill out. It doesn't matter. I've got this. Granted, you have to pay people to paint. It's not like someone would just do it for free. A standard rate for a painter is $2 to $6 per square foot. Uh, okay. I don't know how many square feet this is. Okay, let's say B to six foot. I asked a team of highly advanced and tactical scientists and mathematicians to calculate the... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I, I eyeballed this, and by my perfect calculation, this ends up being about 5 feet by 15 feet. The final calculations come out to be 75 square feet. Let's just say it's $4 per square foot, since the range is between 2 and $6. The price ends up being $300, plus the $10 we had to pay for the paint can, meaning, at least under U.S. California laws, a beat would only be charge for a misdemeanor and not a felony. But wait, you are technically breaking another law by running from the police. Well, God damn it, this complicates everything. This charge is known as evading arrest on foot. And I looked it up. Skateboards and roller skates are not considered to be a vehicle by most laws. Well, that's good to know if you're a criminal. This again is a fairly small charge, punishable by up to one year in county jail. However, a defense attorney might argue that in cases where the police uses illegal excessive force, it may be a defense that the arrestee acted in lawful self-defense. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would consider running up to someone with a f***ing shotgun, rockets, whips to be illegal and excessive. So I don't know, like, yeah, you're committing a crime, but, th but does this warrant being publicly executed in the streets in cold blood? You'd probably just get all these charges thrown away in court because the police are trying to murder you. If anything, these guys should be thrown in jail. Where's a good lawyer when you need one?